Okay, so uh, my name is Guy Eller. I did my master at bar -Ilan University, where I wrote this paper together with uh, Dr. Eitan Fataya. And what our paper uh, asks is whether we can use stochastic gradient Langevin dynamics uh, to provide differential privacy for deep learning. And don't worry if you don't know what stochastic gradient Langevin dynamic is, I'll explain it shortly. So a little bit of motivation first. We know that machine learning models achieve state-of-the-art results in various fields. And to train these models, we need a vast amount of data. Yeah. So in some cases, this data can be sensitive or personal and should not be made public. And this can pose a problem because previous work showed that uh, training data can be extracted from a trained model. For example, the work, of, the work of Carlini, who showed that they can extract uh, training images from a trained diffusion model here. So one common approach to handle this problem is to use differential privacy. And several previous work analyzed the connection between differential privacy and stochastic gradient Langevin dynamics. In our work, we extend this research to understand whether we can use SGLD to train machine learning models in a differentially private way. So what is SGLD? Um, to best understand it, uh, it, let's look at it in the eyes of Bayesian inference, which is one of the main uses for SGLD. So in Bayesian inference, we compute the posterior distribution over the model parameters based on observed data. And we use that information to uh, make predictions for new data. However, to, um, to directly use the posterior distribution and obtain it is not always possible. And a common approach is to use approximate or exact sampling algorithms to sample from uh, that distribution. Uh, I mean, to generate representative samples for the, the distribution and use those uh, samples instead. So SGLD is uh, such an approximate sampling algorithm used to sample from the posterior. And if you didn't follow, this is the important part. The task we want to use SGLD for here is as following. Given a data set uh, X, a model uh, described by its likelihood in a prior distribution, we would like to sample from the posterior distribution. Okay, so how does SGLD do that? Uh, it's an iterative algorithm such that in each, each iteration, we select a batch of samples and perform the SGLD step we can do here. And I won't go into the details of this uh, step. Instead, I'll tell you that it can be seen as stochastic gradient ascent with Gaussian noise, okay, this is the noise, where the variance of the noise is calibrated to the step size. Now, SGLD was shown uh, to converge asymptotically. However, non-asymptotic bounds only exist for non-trivial conditions, and you will see why this is important uh, later on. Uh, last thing, um, in this work, we consider cyclic SGLD, which means that we first shuffle the samples and then we go over them in a cyclic manner. Okay, luckily I don't need to uh, explain this. Uh, I hope you all understand it by now. I'll just repeat the, the main intuition uh, uh, provided that if algorithm is differentially private, the output of the, the algorithm should not change by too much due to a single record change. So there are good reason to believe that SGLD could be used for differential private learning. One of them is that SGLD could be used to sample from the posterior distribution. And previous work showed that sampling from the posterior can be private in some cases. And a second reason to believe that uh, it can be private is that the process itself of adding noise to the, to the gradient step mirror common differential privacy mechanism as Gutam showed. So we ask ourselves, is SGLD really differentially private? Well, prior work showed two types of analysis. 
First is based on differential privacy mechanism, so the, the differential privacy guarantees degrade as more uh, operations are performed. Therefore, this analysis only uh, applies for a limited number of steps. And note that by limiting the number of steps, you also might impair the algorithm performance. The second one is based on approximate sampling from the posterior distribution. Now, to use that, that analysis to guarantee privacy, you also have to guarantee approximate convergence to the posterior, which can be hard for some cases, for example, for non-convex problems, which many deep learning problems are non-convex. So we see that there is no really effective um, privacy analysis for this interim region. And moreover, this is the main region of interest because otherwise we either might impair the algorithm performance or we will have to guarantee con uh, convergence, which is not always feasible. So uh, two concurrent works also address this issue uh, for convex and smooth loss functions. And what they show, the, the result is in the blue line here, uh, they show an upper bound over the privacy, which plateaus after a certain number of steps. In our work, we show something that is a bit different. So this is our main theorem. I will go over, go over it really quickly, and then I'll explain what it means. So for every delta between 0 and 0 0.5, and epsilon and epsilon tag greater than 0, there exists a number t, a domain, and a Bayesian inference problem for which a single sample from the posterior distribution is epsilon delta differentially private. However, approximate sampling by running SGLD for T steps is not epsilon tag delta differentially private. And I'm sure you all followed and understand. But if not, the, the, what this theorem means is that approximate sampling using SGLD might result in an unbounded loss of privacy in the interim region even if sampling from the posterior is as private as desired. And another thing we can see from here is that the differential privacy of SGLD uh, doesn't necessarily increase monotonically. Okay, one small uh, note um, for the rest of the talk, I, I won't mention Delta uh, from convenient. So when I talk a lower on a lower bound on privacy or upper bound, I'll, I will always, always refer to epsilon. Okay. So how did we prove this theorem? Um, we need to get tight bounds over the differential privacy. And one way to do so is to directly analyze the distribution of the samples. So this is hard in the general case. So to, to circumvent this pro problem, we looked on a Bayesian linear regression problem over a constraint domain. So this is the problem given a linear model with Gaussian noise, uh, a data set from a constraint domain and a prior distribution, we would like to sample from the posterior. So why did we choose this, this problem? Uh, aside from the fact that it gave us the behavior that we want to show, uh, this specific, for this specific problem, both the posterior and the SGLD samples are uh, the distribution of both of them is a mixture of Gaussian with closed form expressions. By having closed form expressions, we could directly analyze the distribution and in that way to get tight bounds over the differential privacy. So what we showed is that sampling from the, the posterior is O of uh, C square over N, N to the third differentially private. While for the same problem, there exists an SGD step in which releasing a sample will not be C square over N square differentially private. So as C and N are parameters of our domain, we can change them as we want to show the behavior described by our theorem. So like, let's look on a little example. This is a specific instantiation of the Bayesian linear regression problem for a specific choice of parameters. And for this example, we uh, show that sampling from the posterior is 0 0.5 differentially private. And in this figure, 
we can see uh, the privacy when releasing a simple a single sample when running SGLD. And we can see that the lower bound reaches like 38, which is not differentially private at all. So while the posterior is private, 0 0.5, um, the lower bound is much higher. So to understand what happens here, uh, let's look on the dynamics of the problem. Uh, and we consider two data sets, uh, D1 and D2, where D1 samples are all equal. And by the way, they are not zero. Uh, in many times, the, uh, in many other papers that I just put them uh, to be zero, this is not the case here. And D2 have one sample different because it's a neighboring data set. So for these two data sets, um, for data set D1, the distribution of the, the samples will be a Gaussian that slowly moves towards the posterior distribution. However, for data set D2, each different order of samples will have different distribution. And in total, we will get a mixture of uh, Gaussians. Um, but here for visualization, let's look on a specific order. So in that case, we will get also a Ga Gaussian for data set D2. And let's see what happens. Here we see the two distributions. And we see that a small difference in the means uh, is formed. And while this difference is small, uh, this together with the small variance create a significant difference between the distributions and therefore a significant breach in privacy. Okay, so we finished with the analytical part. Now let's move to the empirical evidence. So we wanted to understand whether SGLD can also, SGLD can provide the differential privacy for more complex models. So we empirically estimated the differential privacy it gives by attacking it with a modification of the adversary instantiation method by Nassar and others. So this is how the attack looks. Um, we take a data set and using DeepFool, we create an adjacent data set. Then we select one of the data set with equal probability and use SGLD to train a model on the selected data set. Lastly, we use a classifier to distinguish which data set was used to train the model. Now, intuitively, if SGLD is private, the accuracy of the classifier will be relatively low. Let's look on the results. Uh, so we did this attack on the SGLD-based training process of LNET5 trained on MNIST. And to do that, we trained 500 models to train the classifier and another 500 models to evaluate the attack on, and actually another 20, I think, models to create the adjacent uh, uh, data set. And here we can see the results, and we can see that we, we get a lower bound of around three, which allows the, the classifier to distinguish between the data set with uh, relatively high accuracy. So to conclude, we show that approximate sampling using SGLD might result in an unbounded loss of privacy in the interim region, even if sampling from the posterior is as private as desired. And what this means is that we, uh, we should give special care when using SGLD for private uh, predictions, especially for problems in which we can't guarantee convergence. And that's it. Thank you very much.